basically not everybody in this room except for two of you, I think. Um, but my name is Greg. And for the last, well, this is my third podcast. For the last two years, I've been volunteering and just helping out. And actually, last year, I didn't even get to attend the session as a result. But So it's been a lot of fun. Um, I didn't know that we were in these smaller classrooms, so I thought maybe it would be a bigger lecture hall of sorts, so it's kind of nice. The, uh, the lunches, last year, I don't know if any of you know this, but I remember we, we had so many left over, and I think it was the same today. I wonder what they're going to do with them, but we actually ended up taking about 80 lunches to the, to like the, to the shelter across the street, which was really cool. So just so you know, I'm, I'm sure they'll probably do the same thing. It would be nice if they did. Um, as far as social media goes, this is more or less how um, we use social media at, at my work um, to sort of work better remotely. We're not by any means good at social media. Um, we don't even. <laughs> we only recently started trying to use our own Twitter and things like that, and that's sort of been a transition. It's been something we're still experimenting with and trying to figure out how to use it. Um, but most of all, we, we find that we use it just for communication within our company. Um, the, so yeah, this is the last two years we've been telecommuting, and this is sort of what I have to say about it from my personal perspective. Um, why telecommute? And it's sort of this works. Hang on, you have to use the arrow. So we telecommute because we're in Union Town. Um, I don't know if you are you two are you from Pittsburgh at all? No, but I know Union. Know where that is. So you would understand that going to Union Town, you end up going through a couple urban areas, and then next thing you know, you're sort of in farm country. And depending on the way that you go, you can hit tolls. You can hit Route 51 or 43. Uh, there's there's so many different ways to get there, but none of them are really convenient at all. Uh, 40 mile drive turns into about an hour to an hour and 20 minutes, sometimes up to two hours. Um, that's two hours is definitely the longest commute I've had, and that was when I was living in Bellevue at one point in time. The So yeah, nobody nobody really lives near our office, so that was another reason why we decided to tell you. We have one person who actually lives in Uniontown. When I started there, there were two people, uh, Paul actually works with so he was living there and uh, doesn't live there anymore. <laughs> so we, we had the, the option to leave our, um, you know, to not have to work or live where we near where we work. But essentially, we, we do kind of live where we work now because we're working from home. Um, so everything we build is digital. That's another thing. We don't, you know, we don't do any anything as far as. Uh, needing to, um, I don't know how to really word it, but, but basically our, everything that we release, everything we launch is all 100% digital. So we don't really, we, we use digital means to communicate. We, we build everything on computers, so why even bother going into an office? Um, so I don't really know the best way to, to explain to somebody how to, how to convince uh, their employer to allow them to do this, so I don't expect anybody to be able to go AWOL in the next week or two, but just trying to maybe implement it into their, their work processes and, and things like that would be a, a good thing to, to try to communicate, and, that, and that's really difficult. I've heard a lot of people have success with it, and a lot of people just not have any luck at all. In fact, even Matt mentioned that to me, so I'll argue in a little bit. As far as my, my job titles that I've had over the last few years, they're all, for the most part, I have the ability to do all of them from home, except for maybe one of them, and that's, I believe, the print associate one. Um, the, uh, so it's about seven years of, of job titles, and uh, even, even education, that's, that's something that's, you know, you have higher education, online education is just soaring right now. A lot of people are, a lot of schools are training people to be uh, productive at home or wherever they're deciding to work, coffee shops, um, you know, remotely, wherever they decide to go, and they're coming out of college with degrees and they're able to sort of 
take that into a, into a workforce where they can work remotely. And I think that they're already being trained to do that in schools. So why not keep, keep up with it? These sort of things that you might see on, on Craigslist and, and things are like these job offers that you see all over the place. Some of them actually look legit, like if you're 97 bucks a day, yeah, that would be, that's okay, 200 bucks, 217 bucks a day for working online for 30 minutes a day, that would be nice. But they're really unrealistic, and that's sort of, that's definitely not what we, <laughs> obviously not what we do, we're actually working in a legitimate business. So if anybody does have any experience with working with one of these, I'd like to know about it, because I would like to try it. <laughs> but I would, I would imagine that a lot of people do not believe that this is true, but I mean, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, lot of blog blogs out there that, that say it is, so it's hard to you know, pick a side to, to take. Um, I guess that's sort of the impression with the, with the telecommuter, is that we work in our underpants all day, and uh, I think my friends and family see this uh, when, they, when they first care about it, or you know, when I mention that I work from home, they sort of get this impression that we're lazy and we don't, you know, we don't really barely get out of bed, more or less. Uh, I sort of envision myself more like this, kind of on the go. Um, I like to set my alarm as early as possible, but sometimes it doesn't happen. You know, if I start work at 8.30, it's 8.29 and I might get up, or you know, usually I try to be realistic and I think about all the things that I'd like to do before I go to work, and that's you know, shower, eat breakfast, take my dog out, that's really important. Um, get coffee and uh, you know, obviously get dressed. So that's sort of definitely part of my routine working from home. Um, and it eliminates the need to commute. So when you sort of see this traffic, uh, this is most likely in California, but this is probably more familiar if you've ever seen this before. And uh, I saw this on a, on online not too long ago. It was a Facebook post of sorts, maybe a few months back, and then uh, I, it took me a while to find it again. And I found it on this blog on through Boring Pittsburgh uh, to get you. <laughs> so, uh, do do any of you do any of you uh, commute more than ten hours a week? Besides on a you know, on a on a bicycle. <laughs> So, do you, uh, do you telecommute or do you, okay, and how long have you been doing that? Um, I shouldn't say telecommute as my full-time job, but I run okay. my own business there. Oh, right, and, okay. Uh, so working for several clients means okay. telecommuting. So, right, so sort of what do you consider so more or less a freelancer, but you're, but you're telecommuting because it's your own business. Yeah. Okay, and I, and I have sort of some slides about that as well, um, some comparisons from freelancing. Um, so obviously spending five to 15 hours a week commuting is outrageous. Um, one of the things that I actually did do to kind of help me with that was when I was in town, I would I started bicycle commuting. And it took the same amount of time to ride a bike around to, to work and school and things like that as it did to actually drive places at home. And not only that, but then you get home and you don't even have to go to the gym or anything. So it's way more convenient. So if you haven't tried it, I suggest that you do try it a couple of you have in there. Um, obviously, life's just better when you get, you know, when you get off of work at 5:30 and you're at home at 5:30 and on the dot, you're already there. Um, you know, if you wake up a, a tad late, you know, if, you, if you're running late, it's not as not as hectic as, you know, waking up to your alarm 20, 30 minutes past the time that you're supposed to be at work, which doesn't happen too often, but. The point is, I can I can be at the dog park by you know, long before six o'clock, which is definitely something that's that's helped me out a lot in the last couple of years. I briefly mentioned sort of our like, locations, and I could be wrong, Paul and Savannah. I think you, you guys are around that area. They're more towards Greensburg. No, you do. So it's more, either way, everybody is an hour away from a location, so it never really made sense for us to be down there. Begin with the. I've always been sort of 
on the north side of the city. In fact, now I'm, now I'm living in Regent Square, so I'm, this is the first time I've been on the little, I guess maybe you can call it a peninsula of sorts. And I actually thought that I was moving further away from my office when I moved there, but I decided that when I got this apartment, I really wanted a, a nice, uh, I wanted the home office completely separate from my living space, and I wanted to be in a location that I could really enjoy. And with all the parks and everything, it just really made a lot of sense. So I was willing to give up the, I was willing to make my commute longer for the days that I did have to go into the office. And it turned out that it actually made it quicker because because of the turnpike and things like that. It just made it cost a little bit more money. But I think the, the stop and start traffic, um, Eliminating that completely from my commute helped, helped out a lot. So that's, that was sort of a, a, a guessing game. I didn't know that that was going to happen. But so now I'm actually in a more convenient location for when I do have to go to the office. Um, and we even have, just to briefly mention, we do have one person out of state. And they're, uh, they've been working like that for, I think, eight years, five years or something like that. And it's, it's been going well for them. Um, just going back to that, round trip daily commute, this is, these are sort of the numbers that I, that I added up. 115 miles, 12 bucks in gas, $3.32 in tolls, and two and a half to three hours just round trip. And that, that could really take a lot of time out of your work week. And at sort of you know, working from home, you, you kind of get into a bad habit of checking, checking into work at the wrong time. It's, it's extremely difficult to, to Handle, but it's uh, it just makes your job a little bit more convenient. It, it makes it easier for, for Monday morning when you know that, that you already have your inbox cleared out. And so if you're taking an extra five minutes, ten minutes to get coffee or something, it's not a huge deal. Um, so that's that's been a huge help to me as well. The idea of, of working from home is appealing to me because I like to control my you know where I'm working. My, my environment, and I work in a creative field where that to me is really important. So I've been in a lot of several non-creative workspaces where it was just an office building where, where you wouldn't typically have, say, a designer or um, developers, any type of creative mind, and it was really more or less miserable. So my old, old office didn't even have windows. It's just a shared office with tons of Pepsi and soda, access to all the stuff that I don't really enjoy. Um, you know, they'll buy a little pack of bottled water for me, but that was about it. Um, so I started to realize that my my home office at the time, when I was transitioning into a new position and I was also freelancing, it sort of looked the same. It had this little, I don't know if you can make out the slide, but it's sort of my, my college apartment with my desk overlooking my bed. And that was really a terrible experience for me. And as a result, I spent about 30 hours a week in coffee shops. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And that was probably one of the one of the coolest experiences of you know of my career so far. Um, creative workspaces. Um, I went from that apartment to this apartment in Bellevue, and that was really cool for me, just being able to have a completely separate workspace from my from my living space. Um, you know, I found myself a little bit more motivated. It wasn't like the, the greatest office ever, but it was really, you know, really put me in a, in a working mood. Um, the, uh, you know, and, and again, like I said, I've moved out into Regent Square since then. Now I have a similar sort of, similar sort of setup where I have a completely separate office from my living space, even with a separate entrance if I want to use it. And that's, that's been really, really a, a, a game changer for me. And it's, um, but it's been hard to sort of uh, get my mindset on, on using it as much as I, I would like to. Because I, I find myself still in this uh, zone where I can grab this yellow bag of mine and just go wherever I want. And I oftentimes find myself working in my kitchen, uh, sitting at my table. And uh, it seems like every, every single hangout that we have, I'm usually sitting in my kitchen. So when we do Google Hangouts, I'm usually right there in the same spot. Um, our office is just 
this an old vending machine warehouse. It kind of these pictures probably don't do it much to trust this, but to me, I really enjoy it. I like being there. All the cubes are hand built, and uh, lights built into the cubes, and then around the walls, there's lights against the uh, the wall there as well. And it's just it's a really cool environment, and I find a lot of agencies around the area are, are sort of like this, and they encourage some creative thinking. Um, it also taught me a lot about, or got me really interested in, or more interested in uh, architecture and things like that. Uh, well, I'll, I'll never be an architect or any type of uh, designer to that degree. I found that when looking for apartments and, and things that kind of resemble this, you can get an apartment with white walls and an air duct and they'll call it a loft and then double the price. So it tells seriously one of the most amazing things I could say about it. Like when I was looking for an apartment, I had a really difficult time finding something that was nice and, and more or less trendy that wasn't really expensive. So that's sort of why I chose to better region square. Um, that's the uh, same deal. The, again, these are just, these are just shots for, from our office. But we, we have a really creative space, and the problem is that we don't really use it. So we have a dog-friendly office. We have um, you know, a lot of creative people. We have a, a lot of good ideas that we bounce off of each other, but we just, we're just not there enough to really use it. Showclix has an amazing office. They have a ping pong table in the, in the middle of the room. Uh, I bet that could be probably be a distraction, because there's a lot of, I mean, these are all desks here. Um, it's just really, but it was a really cool thing that they had this couch and, uh, and the um, ping pong table, as soon as you walk in, that's the first thing that you see. I don't know if any of you have been in there before, but they did the, they did the ticketing for this, for this event. Um, same thing with this office. This is a really nice space where first thing you can see when you walk in, again, these pictures are really coming out a little bit blurry in here, but um, this is really inviting. It's definitely the place for people. So that's sort of what I was looking for in, in my workspace and um, I would find a lot of that at coffee shops and that's kind of why I got into into going going through two coffee shops. Sorry, This is actually Biddle's Escape it's in the square they just opened uh, roughly a few couple months ago, two or three months ago and it's really nice to have a nice big back patio and then they do other things like yoga and things on the top floor uh, in the evenings and on weekends. So back to sort of freelancing and, and uh, telecommuting. Uh, I freelanced for a couple years through school and then I did a um, couple, couple uh, side projects here and there, but, but nothing too crazy after I ended up uh, getting a full-time job. Um, build, build time for a freelancer. If you're a good freelancer, you can typically build three or four hours in a day if, if you're charging the right amount, and, and that's a comfortable living. But when you're billing hours for somebody else, for an agency or a company, or uh, whether it's social media or design or whatever it is, whatever you're doing from home, it's, uh, it's really important that you you're not billing any two or three or four hours a day because you're on their time. Um, the other thing was uh, work schedules. They sort of compare because they can be flexible. In fact, I know a lot of freelancers like to work a nine to five schedule where they can, but when you're relying on, on, on that income for all of your bills and, and everything that you have to pay, that's really tough to do. And I think I find a lot more freelancers are working way more than what they should in order to, to achieve that. Um, the uh, work location it sort of doesn't really matter where you work if you're a if you're a freelancer or a telecommuter. One thing that I found when I was freelancing was that it wasn't um, you know my clients when, at the time they expected me to be sort of in coffee shops and. Uh, you know, had a phone call with them. They, they expected ambiance and noise from from that uh, espresso machine, espresso, especially when they're knocking the grounds out of the espresso maker. Uh, the for for uh, telecommuters, one of the things that I've dealt with before was sort of uh, being in a coffee shop if I was ever remote. 
and I've had a, a call, a sudden client call, it can be really distracting to uh, have to explain to them, oh, sorry about that, or, or have to immediately mute them and then run outside just to try to get away from the noise. So I quickly got away from, from going to coffee shops, and now, as a result, I spend maybe not even an hour a week in coffee shops, and it's just been a lot better for, for my productivity. Uh, speaking of distractions, there's a lot of distractions that you can have uh, at work as well as at home, and they're, they're kind of, they're the, they can be the same, really, and, and I find that a lot in my workplace. Um, maybe a traditional, um, more, more corporate environment, these sort of distractions wouldn't happen, but I like small shops, and these are sort of the distractions that you might see in a small shop, and one of them is beer. <laughs> so this is actually at work. So when I was coming through all of my materials to see what I was going to present, I happen to have a, a beer picture that I probably tweeted, you know, look at me, I'm just having a, having a beer that somebody dropped on my desk. Um, and they fell end up in fridges. Some, some agencies in the area actually have taps in their, in their, uh, uh, in their workplace. That's insane. You wouldn't think it, but they do. Uh, even cats. We've had cats in our office. Um, <laughs> We go to happy hour, uh, and in this case, we actually ended up. Uh, I should probably say that I um, have some pictures of employees in here, so I'm sorry if uh, <laughs> I forgot a picture of you guys. But uh, so we had, in this case, we actually had a problem that we had to solve, and we had planned on going to happy hour, and so we just decided to take our laptops to happy hour work. Solve the problem there, <laughs> and it worked out. So we're able to do that as as remote employees. Uh, dogs, you know, I have a dog, and I take it to the office, and she can be a little distracting sometimes. The, uh, you know, basically she works with me 40 hours a week, so it's really cool. But she's also at home with me. Um, this probably happens for a good hour a day. You know, she tries to work with Bailey on her lap. I guess it could be a distraction, but I think that the um, you know, the happiness that comes from it is well worth it. I'm sure she's pretty productive. Uh, meetings, same sort of deal. We spend a lot of time in meetings. And when we go to the office, we spend, you know, sometimes a couple hours in one day just in, just discussing projects and, and whatever, whatever's going on. And this also happens at home. And I'll show you sort of how we do these types of meetings at home uh, and try to achieve the interactivity that we have. In, in the same sort of way. Um, we even had a, a bird visit our office recently. And this was this was uh, cat food apparently. So he, he fell out of a nest and we named him Beauregard and nursed him back to well, we tried to nurse him back to health. I don't really know the whole story, but uh, it was it was it was interesting. Noise <laughs> noise is uh, another thing that we had to deal with and I found that working in coffee shops, the best thing that I could do was just put ear, earbuds in my ears. And I don't listen to music at all when I work. I, don't, I, don't, uh, I just find music is actually more distracting to me than sometimes in the noises around me. Um, <clears throat> so usually these earbuds in a, in a coffee shop or in a public location mean that I'm sort of busy. Uh, Facebook, that can be distracting, right? And certain Pinterest and Twitter and Reddit, CNN and, and even MySpace, you know, that could be too, but that's it's not there. Um, so basically, well, the whole internet can be a distraction. And uh, whether it's whether you're accessing it from a from a phone or a device or, or whatever, I think I've checked my my phone seven or eight times today during sessions, and it's because everybody is tweeting and, and doing stuff today, and it's. it's it's the way that, that we, you know, it's the way that we've been communicating for the last few years with all these devices coming up. Uh, but the the majority of us make a living doing this, right? So we we have all of these products and all of these services that are released. Pinterest is only a few months old. You know, they had an invite uh, period for a while, but they're doing really well now. And other distractions, just some obvious ones. Yeah, you know, we have cube neighbors. If I'm on the phone, sort of like do that, like really loud. If I'm on a call, I don't, I don't hear anything, and it's really like it can be, it can be really loud in the ear, and you have to ask clients to repeat yourself. And I find that 
a lot at work sometimes. Um, and it can be, you know, it could be the um, UPS guy even just coming into the, into the office and the dog goes crazy. That also happens at home. If somebody rings my doorbell, my dog's going to go crazy. It just happens. It's just something that I have to deal with. Um, and it's it's loud enough to really interrupt your, your work. Uh, I was on a conference call recently where that actually happened where somebody, was a solicitor, was ringing, ringing my doorbell and wouldn't actually stop. They just kept ringing it. And I had to tell them, look, I'll call you back, please. And that's exactly what I, what I did. I had to call them back. And my dog didn't keep quiet or wouldn't shut up for a good five or 10 minutes after that. So it took me a while to, to call, call them back. So these are coffee breaks, smoke breaks, Tetris breaks, dog walks. Um, I put Tetris breaks in there just because I've, I've always been a fan of going out and working retail through school and everything. Just going out and taking a, a, a Tetris break because I don't smoke. So I'll go play on, my, play on my phone or something for a little bit. Possible distractions at home. You know, you have all sorts of stuff that, that are around you and you just have to sort of avoid them and so they shouldn't be a distraction. So TV, laundry, roommates, kids. If you have kids, I really wouldn't recommend working from home. <laughs> Honestly, or wouldn't recommend them being at home when you're working. I don't know, don't have any kids, but I would imagine that, that wouldn't be very easy to handle. So do you work with them at home? And it's, is it something that you could do if you were if working you're, if remotely you're, for a company, or would you, at that point, maybe like look into a daycare or? My kids typically go to daycare, and my older two are school age now, kindergarten and second grade. But okay. um, for a long time, I telecommuted two days a week with my children at home, expressly because it was right. too expensive to have them in daycare and maintain employment. Right. It literally was Absolutely. cheaper to quit and have them at home with me, but that would end up with me in an asylum. So I actually, you know, I, I figured out ways to keep them engaged while I was doing essential tasks that right. required my full attention um, that did not involve the television. Right. So, so, but you have to have specific kind of kids. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can't because do it. Of, yeah. Because they're quiet and you can put on some TV and they're mm -hmm. fine and, and you're distracted by the TV, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, we're lucky we really um, we don't have a single employee with a child. Right, so we really don't now that I think about it. And so we, <laughs> I, I think maybe it could be because we're you know we're in a nerdy field. I don't know. Well, that's we'll take that to school yeah. on camera. Yeah, <laughs> my husband is a big nerd and he's got okay. three kids. So. <laughs> Actually, no, I bring my children now to meetings with me, and okay. I let my clients know in advance. I'll be bringing one of my children, you know, like right. they're homesick or something, and you know, we bring certain activities. And I find that as long as they know in advance, right. and I, you know, it's present fine. myself as professionally as possible, they're actually fine with it. Okay, Pretty but cool. I've been lucky. It's actually easier as they get older. I had, I had, yeah, like when, when my daughter was three, <laughs> it wasn't so easy to work at home. Now that she's actually five, she has playtime things that she will do on her own, and she only occasionally comes over to me for help. But even at that, you can only work for maybe two or three hours at a stretch. I say three is max. Yeah, yeah, three is pretty much the max before you really need to engage your child and remind them that you're not totally ignoring them for the whole day. Oh, you know, only for chunks of it. I bet it's an obstacle. I don't have to deal with that. So. Well, <laughs> I don't you get hiding, but you also get like mutual engagement. Like my older two will play well together. And I've also trained them to slide me notes while I'm on the phone. Oh, nice. you know? That's brilliant. My five year old can draw a picture of what he wants, like a banana. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you can do that while you're on the phone. Exactly. And exactly. And I reward Yeah, and I reward that behavior. But right. when they speak into the microphone, Mom, I need you and then, <laughs> <laughs> then I'm like, All right, no T V for you. Oh, wow. I can do it. Anybody else have an experience with that? Sorry. Actually, maybe my husband yeah. probably is almost as bad. Because <laughs> yeah. they forget that you're actually home to work yes. and not to yes. hang out. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, that's I'm sorry. If they can, kids can be more of a distraction too when they get older. Because I have two oh. teenagers and you know, be the I'm not letting their own. I'm not a sibling <laughs> fighting two dogs. I could never look home. It's just too. Right, and it, it's really not curved for everybody. It'll be um, when they're in college. 
Yeah, we, we, we don't have a, we don't even, I don't think we've had anybody really not like it or, or complain or have any serious obstacles. I think that the biggest obstacle for me was dealing with a, with a neighbor that really wasn't too happy with me working. Um, because he was just like a, a night owl and he slept all day. So for me to be on, on, the, on a conference call or whatever, you could hear it through the vents and ended up leaving that apartment. Wow, that's totally his problem. Right. I mean, that is not yeah, yours. no, but, but it was, it was actually a huge mess. Thing. So that was, yeah. a, that was a huge, it turned into a, a big issue for me because I, I ended up moving and then I had to, I was living in a sort of a studio apartment and then I had to figure out a way to be productive from an apartment with, without my office supplies or anything. Everything was in a 7 by 10 storage for two months and uh, at that point, that was at the beginning of the year, I found myself in coffee shops for a couple months and uh, and when I finally got into my new apartment, I went back to um, sticking to my home office. Um, and obviously, naps, I mean that could be a temptation, but it's sort of, it's sort of a, a joke more or less. I mean, people, that comes up with work. Sometimes people would say, let's take a nap. And now they've sort of solved that with these things. Well, if you've seen these on Kickstarter with the, uh, <laughs> with the, the ostrich pillow. <laughs> so you can take naps at work now. <laughs> Nobody has one of these yet, but I would imagine one of us will eventually. <laughs> and I, I don't know if you're supposed to wear it on your head all day like that. <laughs> you decided to. Some suggestions. We, um, uh, you know, we, we started with a flexible schedule, and this was this is long before I got there. So for uh, a long time, maybe a few years, couple years, two or three years or so, uh, they, they sort of worked the schedule. It was Monday through Thursday, 8:30 to 5:30, and then on Fridays, working from home, wherever you wanted, from 8:30 to 2:30, and taking a, a 30 minute 30 minute lunch instead of an hour, and that was sort of a, a trial period and that worked out really, really well. And it was about two, almost exactly two years ago that we decided that we would come into the office Mondays and Wednesdays for the most part and uh, sort of wherever we wanted to work on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Fridays. And that's it's been the same nothing's changed since uh, since we started with, with the Fridays all. We do everything the same except we've had a lot of um, a lot of new Technology that we've been able to work with, and a lot of different ways to, to sort of work and be more productive. Um, and really, the only advice that I have is just to ask. And, uh, I know Matt, you said that you tried it and it just didn't go over very well. How do you how do you sell? I mean, how can you, you know, I guess, monetize? And to be able to prove that you can, you can do your, your job from your, you know, from home, right? And, and that's Sort of, I guess the work shows for itself. If you're still getting work done, it depends on the type of work that you do do, though. And then if you're inaccessible, if you're not accessible to everybody else, if the whole if the whole office isn't able to communicate with you because they don't have any or whatever, if the office isn't already using some type of a communication system where they're using we use Google Chat, for instance. And that's the way that we communicate. Even if somebody's next to me, I usually get an IM. Just, I, I'm sure that goes for almost everybody's office. You don't send somebody an email and then tap them on the shoulder five seconds later and say that you get the email. It's more or less rude. Uh, sometimes it happens if it's really important, but um, that's sort of just asked. I mean, I, I know when I when I asked about having a couple extra days, that's all I did was ask, and it was because they were already um, already doing, they were already telecommuting as it was, and we were already had uh, thought, about, thought about it a lot. It was really easy to convince them to, to allow us to do that. And uh, nobody complained about it either. So we still have access. Anybody can go down there at any time. But uh, I don't know that anybody does. I think it's, the office is pretty open on three days a week. So it's been more or less a waste of office at this point. We're still trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> May I ask? I hate sure. to sound ignorant. Why is it based in Union Town? We we got some some type of grants. And so like that. there was a the yeah. Pittsburgh Technology Council was working with Augusta, Pennsylvania, to try to bring ten tech companies here. And apparently, Fayette County, New Town got a big grant because they have apparently lots of uh, government support that goes there generally. So as a result, uh, they gave us a big, big, really cheap loan 
I like buildings and materials. All right. And it was kind of like one of those offers you don't refuse. Mm -hmm. And so you, you suck it up and go, yeah, Uniontown is literally, as, as I live there, so I described it as an hour from everything. Mm -hmm. It's an hour from West Virginia and Morgantown. It's an mm -hmm. hour from Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. uh, but you make up for the fact that, you know, we're basically a digital company. We use Dropbox and we go hang out and we go talk. And it really doesn't matter for our clients unless they want to come visit us, mm -hmm. which rarely is a requirement. Yeah. Yeah, that, that happens on once every few months. To be honest, often we just work, turn it around and we go visit them. Right. Yeah, you know, they're brick and mortar more than we are. So go and hang out their office and you know, talk about whatever it is they want. I do that on almost on a weekly basis now. Yeah. Um, so since I live in the area and, and my roles have sort of changed, I'm finding myself uh, always in other people's offices. Um, Sometimes more, sometimes in other, other offices more than my own in any given week. It's just been, been the way that it's worked out for me. So, but, but yeah, like Paul said, we just got a, got a nice grant or a really cheap loan, and that worked out for us. So, that's sort of why it's, why it's in Union Town. Um, you know, and that building would be, I mean, that, that office would be like four grand a month for in the strict district. So, that's yeah. good. A really cheap building. If you're a startup, you take it where you can get it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so the some things that, that I've you know been able to do since uh, since telecommuting or, or experiences, one of them is working vacations, and that can be really that can be really inconvenient. At the same time, it can be convenient. So there were a couple cases where I had to. We want at least one case where I had to. Go, or I had scheduled a vacation, and the options were to either get somebody else to speed in the final project, or just, just take care of it while I was down there. And um, didn't necessarily spend a lot of my vacation. I spent a, spent a total of one day uh, out of five, um, a couple hours a day, while everybody else was sleeping or whatever, just catching up on, on the project. So it was really, really convenient for me to be able to do that. Um, seeing uh, I have a lot of family overseas, so for me that that's. Uh, good to know that I can do that if I wanted to go overseas for three weeks and um, spend working, spend my, my time working sort of in, in their afternoon and our morning in this in this time zone. That's an option for me that I can take, which is really convenient. It's really helpful. Um, just as long as I have a, um, a solid place to work while I'm over there, which I would imagine would be really easy to find. Um, and visiting them. So, coffee shops is sort of related. So we spend a lot of time in coffee shops, or a lot of people have, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, and that's basically the, the stereotype is that we spend all this time in coffee shops. There's a lot of memes about that online. Borrowing office space is something that I've, I've done recently, where um, we have I, mean, I have friends that are in the industry, and I've been able to go to their office in Europe, and I. I did that uh, around about the same time where I was sort of in between moving into apartments. I just I went to a friend's office in Mount Washington and worked there for a day. Um, Co-working space is something that, that's coming, uh, what's well, taking off slowly, it seems, in Pittsburgh. There are a few co-working spaces in the area, which uh, one of them is Catapult Pittsburgh on the Penn Avenue. And it's, the idea is that you, you spend uh, you spend a hundred bucks for a, 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 a desk space. You spend up to two hundred dollars for a desk space, or you spend three, four, five hundred on a private office. You have access to a conference room. You have a, a kitchen and things like that. And it's, that's something that I, I actually haven't tried yet, but I've heard so much about it and been into a couple of these spaces. And it's something that that I would consider if I didn't have a, a good location to work or to work on. And I think that slides a little further down. I, in the long space. Um, but why coffee shops? So, um, do you, do you, have any, any of you guys worked in coffee shops before? For any long amounts of time? Like, Paul asked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> why? I mean, I, they have coffee there. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, so I'm a programmer. Coffee, where it's shops have coffee. Greg himself <laughs> may be more of the artsy designy type. Well, he does do. You know, legitimate coding from time to time. I'm your 
I wear cargo pants and I have a keyboard and a computer and I, I go make a big mess on a table. Right. And I just type furiously all day. And I need as much coffee as I can get myself. Right. And that's that's expensive money. too, right? <laughs> so it can be. <laughs> well, I, I found the coffee shop Wi-Fi is not consistent enough. Right. I've actually I actually now carry a hotspot at all times. But Paul is a wireless hotspot in case. So if the wireless doesn't, <laughs> the wireless doesn't work here, he has it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they also have food, human contact, um, like-minded people. I've met a lot of really nice people in coffee shops. Good friends that uh, for for years they've been they've been my close friends. They have Wi-Fi, obviously, and just an escape from home. Being able to leave. Your house and actually go somewhere like you're going to work. That's sort of, sort of something that, it's something that I um, got into when I was freelancing, and to me that that, that was really helpful. Like I said, I've, I've sort of I've phased out of that mentality now almost completely. Um, I work. Uh, my girlfriend lives in, in Kent, so it's a little bit of a long distance relationship. So I sometimes I'll go there on a Friday or something, and I'll work on the coffee shop while I'm there. It's just convenient for me to do so. Um, but bars also have these things, right? So the bars even have Wi-Fi and free phones. And we also have computers as well. So why, so why do coffee? Why do people like coffee shops so much? That's sort of something I don't really know. Uh, I've, like I said, I found a lot of creativity in coffee shops. Uh, I like a lot of the the buildings. Um, some of my favorite coffee shops. I don't know if any of you have seen these. <laughs> <laughs> these are. A couple of them I haven't spent a lot of time in, but there are some coffee shops in here that I've spent upwards of hundreds of hours, uh, solid work weeks for months at a time. Um, I have to say that my favorite coffee shop on here right now is definitely Biddle's Escape, which I showed you that the picture earlier. The, the vibe is really nice and it's a five minute walk from my apartment, but I really don't take advantage of it. One of the most interesting ones on this list is probably Lily. Uh, so Lily or Lily's, it's in uh, Polish Hill. Have any of you ever been there? It's, uh, I don't know, it's probably not even 20 feet long and it's really narrow. And on a Sunday morning, if you go there, you'll probably, you'll probably see people playing banjo and sort of tap dancing. It's really cool. Um, it's a really cool uh, environment. Uh, Verdig of Beans, which is on, I think it's on maybe first or something like that. They. Uh, they're a really cool shop, but I, I just I, I'm never able to find them open. In fact, me and Matt try to go there. <laughs> Not even a Friday morning. morning. Friday morning, yeah. <laughs> and they were closed, so it's sort of hit or miss. And and it's because it's a uh, locally owned mother daughter kind of coffee shop that uh, that they you know that they need a vacation. They both sort of have to take off or something. I don't, I don't know the whole scoop, but. It's an amazing coffee shop. I spent a lot of time there during school because it was right behind my school. Um, and that's sort of where I, I uh, decided that that's something I wanted to go exploring. It's exploring is riding around and going to all these coffee shops. There are definitely a lot more than this, but these are just some of the ones that I uh, really enjoy. In co working space, I briefly mentioned that these are the URLs to three of them in the area. Um, uh, Revo Oakland, that one seems really, really nice and they have a nice space and I think it starts at, I want to say it was like 200, uh, I could be wrong, but if you go to their website you can find a little bit more information about that. Is that a month? Per month for really? that space. And that's, I mean, when you think about it, that's a, I mean, that's it's a tax write off. Yeah, it's cheap. For some for <laughs> space for somebody else's office. It's like 200. And, uh, yeah, it it's, it's, sounds like a great idea. I just, I just don't have any need for it right now. Um, we've sort of talked about it before, like a couple of us at work and things like that, but we've never really gone forth and tried to do it yet. Um, some of the ways that we, we communicate. Sorry. Um, obviously, I am a mission people to G chat and things like that. Um, like any other office environment, we. We use this to just send immediate messages that need replies on as soon as possible, ASAP. Um, and then it's, this is Google Google Chat and everything is you know, a number of years old. But before that, we had you know AOL and the Messenger and ICQ and things like that that, that people were using in offices. 
Gmail, we use Gmail, Google Apps, and things like that. Just for um, and all of it sort of built into each other, Google Drive, basically uh, all of the, the Google products. Um, and we use Google Google Drive for um, some type of some project information, um, HR stuff, job descriptions, and, and things. So it's been really helpful. I really don't know what we'd do without it. But one of the one of the coolest things that we've started using recently is Google Hangouts. This is an actual clip of a Hangout. <laughs> um, have any of you not used Google Hangouts before? So the, the idea is that you have all, all of our pictures on the screen. When somebody speaks louder than the other one, it, it shows their, uh, their image on the screen. And it works really well. I mean, we actually schedule our meetings on days that we have. <laughs> There's Paul. Uh, so we schedule our meetings on days that we have, uh, on, on our days that we're not in the office now, and we use Google Hangouts. And it's just, I don't know why we, we started doing that, but we, we recently started doing that. And I think it's because when we do these Hangouts, this is sort of what we're doing. We're, we're gathering around and, and looking at this document, and it's what we're doing. And we're all sitting there with our laptops, and we're looking at the same spreadsheet about all of our pro project information. And that's something that we can do from, from a Google Hangout just as effectively. And sometimes we save time. We go through these meetings that sometimes take an hour. Sometimes we do them in 20 minutes if we're hangout, if we're lucky. Um, just to have some distractions in Google Hangouts as well. So they have all these little things that, uh, that, they, that they had to make it a little bit more fun. So basically, Google has been one of the biggest tools that we've used. And everything that we do is through Google right now. It was quite a, quite unreal. Skype, I've used Skype a lot for recently for um, for long distance calls, mm -hmm. and uh, up until recently we really weren't having to do that. But uh, you know, recently we, we decided to um, start crediting the account and uh, using this just for, for those calls that are international. Um, I find that a lot of our international contacts actually prefer to give us a Skype username where they have it in their signature. I don't really see that in, or in their email signature. And you don't really see that in the US as important because we sort of take it for granted that we have all of these, these uh, you know, long distance phone uh, plans and everything that are, that are next to nothing. And uh, overseas, it's sort of a, a bigger deal, depending on what country you're in. We use sort of a project management tool called Asana, which you can log into with Google. And it's been really great because everything's on one screen. We don't have to uh, leave screens to kind of go through all of our project information and uh, sort of see the task and communicate messages that we need to throughout the team. In this case, we have two people working on a project, and these comments actually get emailed to you, and then they get dropped into the system, which is great. It's free. Uh, it's insane, insanely awesome that it's free because it's something that we've probably paid for at this point. And there are a lot of paid services out there like Basecamp and other uh, project management tools, but we just decided to go with this one. Um, have any of you experienced timesheets before? We had to account for your time. So a lot of a lot of creative creative firms or ad agencies do this. They do uh, timesheets where you have to account for it every hour that work in any given day for the whole week. And some of them are, are really, you know, you have to build a certain amount of hours per week. And that's something that you don't really experience as a freelancer either, unless you're really diligent. Some things to consider. Uh, the lower amount of office equipment. We haven't bought any office equipment, I don't think, in the last two years. Maybe, uh, I really don't remember last and we bought for the office, um, which means that we have increased the amount of portable stuff that we have to, that we have to go that we have to get. Um, I guess this is just dependent on, on your company or you know, how how it's set up. But when we started, it was sort of a it was a convenience thing, and so everybody was already set up, and, and it's sort of something that we haven't we're still experimenting with. Um, so we. You know, we get some type of reimbursement, but it's nothing, nothing too hectic because we've relied on our own equipment for years, and now we're only just starting to adopt this process. Um, so I have empty office space. 
So that's just something that we, we haven't really figured out what to do with it yet. And we're 4,000 square foot office. Um, and when we're there, we're only using about 2,000 square feet of it anyway. So we have this huge office set that we could essentially, if we could expand it into a, to a really nice size company, we could have easily have 15 people working in this office, uh, maybe even more. But uh, it's just sort of just been, been sitting there and it's not being used. But imagine that that saves on utilities, and I try to get some of that information just to see if I could share it. But um, it was uh, said not available at this time on the online version, so <laughs> I couldn't really get access to it. But I'm still curious to see if I can find the comparisons because now it's been going on for two years. If there's any way to compare like, you know, April 2012 to April 2009, it'd be really nice to see sort of um, where we are and uh, see to see. How it's saving money for the company. And then, what about larger teams? So we're, you know, we we work. There's about eight of us, depending on um, situations. But uh, there's a lot of companies out there that do work uh, you know, in huge teams, and they're doing it 100% remote. And two of them that I'm really fond of, that are really, uh, these guys are really accessible, especially Sci-Fi. Sci-Fi is the hosting company. I don't know if any of you have heard of them. Um, they're comparable probably with like HostGator and uh, things like that. They have 83 employees in uh, 19 countries, and they're all 100% remote. And Ben Ben Walsh, Ron, I don't really know how to say his name. He's uh, he's the CEO. I just emailed him one night, and being the guy that works from home, it was like 7:30 at night when I sent him an email to ask him a couple questions about it. And it wasn't even 10 minutes later that he replied to the page email and I just gave him the card and the card. Card. And he basically said some of the same things that, that I mentioned, you know, communication. Uh, they use some other things like TeamSpeak to, to communicate, which I've never really had an experience with. But it works for them. They have like 50 support people, uh, 50 customer support uh, employees, and then they have like eight engineers and then 15, uh, 15 others. I'm not sure what the others do. But they they sort of work in small teams and they, they run 24/7. This is a hosting company, you know, you have to. Um, and uh, they uh, they have a really good experience with it. They you know, both of these companies get get together once a year, and that's it. And they have FaceTime once a year. Um, automatic is WordPress.com. If you've heard of them, but if you wanted the WordPress blog, they would. They're, they're the ones that you would go to if you wanted to host the hosted solution. And they actually have nothing to do with WordPress.org, as far as I know. They're just uh, hosting the sites. But they're a 128 person team, and their traffic is, is third from Facebook or something like that. And they're, if you go to their, their website, automatic.com, they have some information about that and some stats about um, how 128 of them are running this site, this whole network of sites, more or less. Uh, with all this traffic, you know, that's really, really a cool company. Um, and that's basically it. So, anybody have any questions? You mentioned Dropbox, but you didn't use it in your. Do you, you know what? Yeah, I completely forgot Dropbox. This, we, we go back and forth on so many different tools that we use, but Dropbox is. Dropbox have found. You know, we haven't done the team version, which is like $800 a month or something like that. So I, I, I don't know how, like it's right now. It's more expensive than what we need now. Right. It's because, you know, oh, it's more expensive by 600 and We don't use Dropbox for, for distributed sharing. We use, we use Git. We use a source provisioning yeah. software. So Dropbox is more of like our personal, we can't lose our files. It's source provisioning for the rest of us. And uh, so I think each one is, we have a company one, and we each all have our own individual, I think, at this point. Right. And we maybe share files through Dropbox. Right. I know I use it because now I can just share a file directly, upload to Dropbox. Well, I have people share to our company one, and then I share it with myself from there. But we, it's not, we haven't used it enough to where, we, where we've had to make the decision of we should uh, expand and get the team version. So we're, but instead you use the like Google Drive um, and... And get. What's it called? Get. Get. G-I-T. So, anybody else have any questions or comments?
said. Please Thanks for coming. I mean, here's my point. So we work from home, and when we were trying to convince Sam to do this, probably the, the point was that you can engage your employees a little bit longer during the day if they can't walk away from their office anymore. That was a discussion that I had with Sam, with right. our boss. And what do you think of that? Uh, I really don't know. Like, like you have your office in your house, so right. Right, something, an email comes in at 9.30 at night. So, I mean, first of all, I mean, I, I mean, I, even in the last couple of weeks, I've had had to run home from from breakfast to go get something. Yeah, right. right. And, and that's sort of uh, like I said, it's inconvenient, but it's it's uh, just the price you get to pay, or it's a, it goes worth it. It's not. It's like, I, yeah, I can ignore my emails for the weekend, but what good does that do me when somebody's desperate to get their get their site working? And it's sort of. Um, just some extra attention uh, that I give people. And really, realistically, it's not like I'm working 55, 60 hours a week or anything like that. I put in a couple of extra hours one week. It's not a big deal. Um, that's sort of something that I've, I've done for a while. I used to work in a traditional office environment, and then I had moved to a telecommuting office environment. Okay. And one of the things that I noticed was a huge benefit was that I can focus on my work. Where, where my cube used to be was right on the main hallway. And from about 11.30 until about 1.15, 1.30, seal, hi, how you doing? And you're like, you know, hi. Right. <laughs> going, to the, going to the coffee pot at my house is a two minute right. you know, experience. Going to the coffee pot at my office is like a 15 minute experience, right. depending yeah. on who's standing there, it needs to be longer. I Here's kids in soccer practice and how they're doing, and somebody's selling candy. And you know, did you hear about the thing that happened on the second floor yesterday? Right. And before you know it, your morning is halfway gone. You've only gotten like half the things that you wanted to do. Yeah, that happens to me as well. It's lunchtime and, and you know, no time. It's, it's really quick. Yeah. I, I, so, I don't really have any, any, um, any like preference. Like to me, I feel like I've the same thing that I do at work is, is what I, exactly what I do at home. Um, well, that's uh, just what I miss. The, the benefits. I miss the ability to learn what is going on that people will not tell you right. unless you happen to be present. Well, and I will say that that does, like, the internal, the, the finding out of what's happening yes. in other departments or other places in the company, you don't do it as organically when you're working at home because yes. people kind of forget yeah. to Include you in the loop. And that has happened to me with clients where they've yeah. changed meetings, they have made decisions, okay. and I was responsible for major communication, and I would not know that things had happened. Yeah. Right. Because I wasn't, well, and I was so really one who wasn't just one, there. Just one recommendation. We don't, we we have this sort of uh, schedule where we're, we're in the office on, on those two days a week. Um, and at least that's the idea. We, we do that because obviously we don't want two people to go in one day and two people to go in the next day because we're at such a small team. Yeah. If we were a bigger workplace, and, and you could definitely sort of have a more flexible, flexible schedule. Whereas now it's like, okay, don't schedule bowling on a Wednesday night, schedule bowling on a Thursday kind mm -hmm. of thing. And so we all know exactly when we have to be there, and then sort of all of our schedules have, have adjusted around that, and that's that's been really key to, to how we've able to do that. So, so our communication in the office is everybody is there at the same time. So it's been, it's been really good for us. Yeah. Were you, well, you pioneered this to some extent by, by really pushing us all using project management. So that's what eliminates that problem. And that we all less like complicated project management tools. Hmm? Less complicated. Yeah, we, we yeah. can also do use less complicated in the fact that our, our project management tools are very social right. in that sense. That they yeah. send emails. Yeah, you're it's like it's just associated with the project, you're getting an email mm -hmm. digest. And that's yeah. definitely what yeah. my largest client lacked was right. a, a functioning that, I mean, sure, it was great and they paid for it, blah, blah, blah. They never used it. <laughs> right. So it used to drive me bananas. And there are certain clients that you have that just are not good at communicating. Okay. They're good at communicating with a couple people yeah. maybe in their department, but for I, that, yes. they um, don't do that email digest thing. Where, have they done you know, a passive aggressive thing to you where they like, well, you haven't yeah. explored to find out what changes we have made. And I'm like, no, well, I'm going to chase you down. Yeah.